my vote is not going to count. One vote doesn't make a difference. So many people are saying that. We're getting some perspective from Werner Horn, the Democratic Alliance's member on the Party Liaison Committee of the Independent Electoral Commission. Welcome, Werner. Good afternoon. Thanks for the invitation. Does one vote matter? Yes, of course, one Every vote matters. Every vote counts. That's, of course, on a, on a broad principled level. But, but ironically, we've had instances in, in, in our uh, constitutional democracy where, where single votes um, determine the outcomes of, of ward, specifically ward elections. So there's a number of examples. I think in last year's uh, the 2021 local government election, there was an example in Mafubi in the Free State, who's now been in the news of because of their struggles to 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 go to I want to say get rid of ESCOM, um, where I believe the ANC won a vote with three votes after there was a, a, a multi-candidate split between themselves, the Freedom Front, the DA, an independent and and a community-based organisation, and I believe the ANC in that specific vote didn't even reach 36% of the total vote. So maybe to, to turn, to get back to your statement, and we know many voters have that sentiment that their vote might, won't make a difference because they they can't see beyond the fact that the ANC has had a hegemonic hold on electoral outcomes since 1994. But then on a, on a micro level, there's that, always that possibility that, of course, your single vote can be the one that wins it for your ward candidate. And then on a, on a broader level, if one listened to the, the, the other interesting statistic, and that is that up to the 20, 2004 election, the ANC achieved a majority, even if one compared the votes cast to the total voters' rolls. It was quite clear that it was a hugely popular political party. But since then, their fortunes have regressed to the point where, where now they, 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 if you compare it to the voters' roll itself, of course, govern with a, since 2019 with about 40% of the support of the voters on the voters' roll. And if you add one more interesting aspect, and that is that there's about 13 million citizens of South Africa walking around in the streets which never bothered to register, then it's quite clear that if enough people um, register to vote who wants change, uh, then it can uh, have a, a, a material and a substantive impact on the outcome. Um, yeah, so, sorry, Dent. Now continue. No, no. So, so it is interesting that sentiment you expressed is, of course, prevalent, ironically, in all communities, um, in in predominantly minority communities. There's that sense of uh, it's it, uh, uh, we are in a minority, and therefore our votes won't make a difference. And in 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 African communities, in township areas, there's the sense of we disillusioned with the ANC, but we don't. We don't see them ever losing. So it is a mindset amongst many South Africans which must be addressed. I, I think it also is clear clear to be seen in the in the voter turnout figures, which has regressed substantively since at least the 2014 election. So there's one more negative that that happened during the Zuma years. Up to 2009, there was a, about a 72, 73 percent of the voters on the national voters roll who turned up during national elections and they went backwards since 2014 and in 2019 it didn't even reach 67 percent with forecasts for 2024 uh, all modeling on a at a turnout turnout of about 63 to 65 percent only do you have the latest registration figures yeah so the 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 IEC is is very good in 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 um, telling us who's registered. The interesting first uh, comment is that, despite the fact that that females make up roughly fifty two percent of our population, fifty five percent of of 
registered voters are female. So it would firstly be a, a, f a finger that's pointed at, at male citizens who, who obviously over the years have neglected to register. Um, there's now roughly about 26 million um, voters on the voters' roll. And the IEC also is, is, is um, able to analyze the voters' roll further in comparison to the, the um, let's say, the, the population register. And the biggest portion of people who has never bothered to register is those below the age of 45. So those of us 45 and over as a registration percentage um, or a, 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 let's say a, a representation on the voters are more than 90% of us are on the voters. So it's, it's really the younger generation. Now, some people will be quick to point out that, that this is, of course, a global trend. Young people um, tend to think that they can live without politics. But as the old saying goes, you might not be interested in politics, but politics is very much interested in you. So then by the time they they find employment in South Africa, unfortunately not a large percentage of us, uh, you start a family, you maybe have a bond, uh, financial responsibilities, then all of a sudden you start people start thinking about the, the impact government, decisions of government and service delivery have on the quality of their lives. And then the trend of, of registering is, is a bit bigger. That doesn't say we must make peace with the fact that, that specifically the age group 18 to 25, I mean, the registration percentages there is, is desperately low. I think anything from 5 to about 25% only of, of that age group is, is typically registered to vote. Um, and and maybe that that's the... I want to say the silver bullet political parties can also look um, to, 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 to employ in that run up to 2024 is whether you can ultimately infuse that, that, that demographic group to go and register. In, in Africa, we've seen more recently, I believe it was in, 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 in Zambia, where a, a disproportionate registration mm. outcome amongst that age group ultimately affected the change in government. So maybe to get back to your initial question, that's where every vote ultimately counts. And that is that if, if everyone who shares a sentiment joins hands and, and, and exercise their democratic rights and duties. Maybe talk about the importance of voting in a time when coalitions are becoming more and more likely and outright majorities less and less likely. Yeah. So of course then votes and, and specifically who you vote for also become more important. Uh, look, I'm, as you pointed out, I'm from the Democratic Alliance. So I'm, firstly, this conversation is on the assumption that, that, that those of us who share the sentiment that they must change must be affected, change on the basis of the dreams and, and the values and principles of our constitution. Uh, one way to refer to it, of course, now is, is the possibility of the moonshot pact that can, can maybe uh, gather around parties with broadly those, the, who share broadly those sentiments. And, and he, the reality is, and I think that, that our federal leader, John Stiernais, and I made clear when he announced those plans at our federal congress, is that even if you add up the, the historical support levels of all of those parties who broadly agree about the way forward, you won't get to much more than 35% of the vote if you take local government election outcomes, maybe 40% of the vote. So in that sense, to build a coalition that can unseat the ANC, of course, votes will need to be added. So the message to, to everyone who share the sentiments of those parties is for you in, in 2024 to not register and, or if you're registered to stay home will be as good really as saying that you, you, you're satisfied with the status quo. But then if you talk coalitions, there's of course, I believe, also warning signs for us uh, on the mm -hmm. basis of what, of what has happened in the local government elections and the the instability, the massive instability we've seen in, in places like mm. Johannesburg, to a lesser extent, Swane, mm. and, and also Nelson Mandela Bay, where there was a 
proliferation of small parties, many of them in, in, in councils as big as Joburg and Swane with 240 councillors, holding one or two seats, but who's ultimately then placed by voters in that position of, of being what I think is, is, is called globally the kingmakers. And the difficulty, Chris, is this. Uh, it's one thing to, to, to wrestle in the mud with those who's broadly aligned with your values and principles if, the, if their internal democracy and their internal governance structures is as, at least something that enables you to ultimately, while grinding your teeth, go forward. The difficulty with many of these smaller parties is that very soon after the election, also because they didn't perform the way they dreamt when they set up these smaller parties, now you have one or two councillors in council, but outside of council is four and five, four, five or six other members who believe they should be there. And then because you don't have a strong internal democracy, Congresses are called, um, people are being recalled, uh, chaos ultimately ensues and uncertainty as to who can represent those parties in counts. Mm. So that's specifically playing out, I, I believe, at the moment in Nelson Mandela Bay, where previously our mayor, Retief Gwedendal, governed on the, I want to say, on the back of a nine, ten party coalition. And then one or two of those very small parties very soon fell into this type of, of, of insta instability, internal chaos, where the courts ultimately mm -hmm. in, month, in the months to come will decide who's really in control of that party. And, and that will ultimately determine whether the, that specific party still wants to be part of a, a, a coalition with the DA versus the ANC. I mean, I don't even want to add into the mix the, the possibility of you know, politics of the stomach, the, the fact that that if you don't have a strong in, in internal culture, your ability to, to instill discipline and and have an absolute demand that your representatives there act with integrity at all times, that's also very, very much diminished. So one would think that in a democracy, voters in the run-up to 2024 must hopefully go to school on, on, on what happened when they they lent their votes to to these parties who ultimately turn out to be turncoats um, and not not to be not dependable in terms of representing interests in counts. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately in South Africa it's that's not what we've seen. I mean currently there's thirteen parties represented in the National Assembly. Um that's uh, more than double than than the number of parties that were represented in 2004. And of those smaller parties, many of them also came in on fractions. And uh, I, I mean, and, and it must be said that ultimately, uh, some of them, you, you only see their members of parliament in parliament when it's the state of the nation or maybe the budget debates and for the rest, they're not there. So... I don't know whether those who voted for them are asking those critical questions of them. Um, but in terms of looking towards building dependable, reliable coalitions, if one forgets for a moment mm -hmm. about the ideological out outlook of coalitions, one must ask what value will ultimately be added by members of provincial legislatures, members of parliament, where there's no whip who ultimately can ensure the presence of those of, of those members, um, so that's something voters must think of very carefully. Maybe I must add that's the one thing uh, of mm. of late which the DA and the ANC seems to be uh, agreeing on, and that is that we need coalition gov uh, managed guidelines, legislation, and institutions. Mm. So. We have introduced mm -hmm. a suite of um, private members' legislative mm -hmm. laws or bills, which which talks to, firstly, in installing a minimum threshold for for parties to take up seats in in councils. We also uh, have 
uh, advocated in those private members' bills for a, a, a registrar of coalitions where written coalition agreements must be put in mm. place. And we even have proposed, even though it, you know, sometimes you must be careful what you wish for, that systems be put in place to prevent this this repeat of a uh, endless repeat of motions of no confidence, which we see in the in some mm. of counts. So the, so those this, draft bills propose that uh, unless there's extraordinary circumstances, you can only have one motion of no confidence per year. And that can add a bit to, to stability if a coalition government is ultimately um, set up. So, so yes, uh, coalitions um, and uh, specifically the impact on whether a party will be able to take up seats through single votes sometimes uh, will be massively important after 2024, when in all likelihood there will be a number of provinces and even the National Assembly where no party might have a majority. I just want to ask you about systems failures at the IEC in 2021. Um, many potential voters uh, were put off and were disadvantaged, and that's also made people cynical. How have political parties engaged with the IEC to prevent the recurrence of that? Yeah, no, you're quite correct. Look, the IEC in 2021 introduced new voter management devices. So previously they had these mm -hmm. zip zip machines when we queued to vote uh, they would uh, uh, put in your ID on the zip zip machine. It would issue a small sticker, which ultimately I think was a, do a, a system to manage the voters' row. And it indicated while you were queuing whether you at least were in the right queue. Um, then the IEC, for a variety of reasons, embarked on a process to develop new motor voter management devices. And it was introduced in the run-up to election 2021 with a lot of teething problems. Um, you, you're quite correct. Firstly, the mapping function, either whether it was through the online registration platform or these voter management devices, gave massive problems, failed, uh, bombed out on, a, uh, on over the registration weekend, causing those who ultimately were able to register sometimes to be registered hundreds of kilometers away from where they they should have been registered. And then in addition to that, um, because this the, the system ultimately failed over the registration weekend, a lot of people who in good faith used the 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 I want to say the uh the forms or even just the, the piece of paper made available to them by mm -hmm. registration officials who promised to then effect their registration at the office afterwards, uh pitched uh, on election day 2021 only to be told that you're not registered and, and um, that specifically happened to a lot of younger voters I can say as you indicated I'm, I'm on that liaison committee um, with the IEC that the IEC has done a, a good analysis of where this why the systems failed where the critical weaknesses were that they for example in respect of the mapping function have uh, realized that despite the fact that they sim seemingly had up to 12 servers available over the registration weekend to handle the traffic, the difficulty ultimately was that there was one entrance um, into that server capacity, um, which then okay. <laughs> ultimately led to, to, to the bottlenecks and the system bombing out, apart from the, the let's say, the, the, the technical um, ability of the mapping function. So they've explained how they've now created multiple paths, pathways into the, the mapping function. So hopefully that will not, will not uh, be a problem again. Um, and then in addition to that, the, uh, well, both network connectivity on which it depends, cell phone towers and, and the strength of network coverage as well as bandwidth and, and once again, traffic volumes uh, impacted on uh, on the efficacy of, of the system to the point where it was largely offline over the registration. So we're fairly satisfied that the interventions the IEC took in theory will, it, will address all of this. The difficulty is, however, the IEC says to us, and we must understand it because we know uh, also that that's the way uh, 
budget appropriations through the, the national treasury now works is that their their budgetary allowance does not allow them to to contract an outside company to do a proper stress test now on the system before the registration weekend, the first which will be on the 18th and 19th November this year. So that registration weekend will be the first opportunity where these interventions will be tested. Um, we're living in the in the hope and the, and the belief that there's a probability that the systems will work better this time around. But the good news is, of course, that this time around they plan to have two registration weekends. Um, okay. So, so one in February again. So, which is the second dry run, which will position them better to to have a successful election day come election twenty twenty four. And in the meantime, and that's an important message also to all those not registered or who has moved out since the last election. In the meantime, during the I, I want to say what is essentially now very much off peak use of the online platform available on the IEC website, elections.org.za. You can also go to our own website, check.da.org.za, and, and we'll guide you there how to make use of the online registration platform on your own time, in the comfort of your own home. And, and then you can skip the cues and the possible frustration of that, that might again ensue during the registration week. Well, lastly, Ivana, um, one other thing that puts off voters is the dirty and negative nature of politics. And many voters don't have much faith left in politicians, regardless of which party they come from. What do you have to say? Yeah, I think that's also why voters are, op uh, I want to say, optimistic about the Apathetic. possibility of, of the moonshot <laughs> fact, in the sense that at least mm -hmm. while while well, you would not give up your own identity in, 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 in a pre-election pact, hopefully there would at least be a broad agreement that you won't embark on negative campaigning against one another because you hopefully you will all in that pact be committed to adding votes to to the cause and, and not just fishing in the same pond. So th that's the first thing that, that, that I can say on a positive level around maybe changing the nature of our politics. But Chris, the reality is, is that, that politics by its very nature is, as you say, sometimes a dirty business. Today's um, friend might be tomorrow's in enemy is also the old saying of, of that you don't have in politics, you don't have permanent friends, you don't uh, only have permanent, permanent interests. Um, I understand that it's off-putting to voters who really just are just looking towards fixes, but and 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 you know I'm very I'm saying this very much mindful of the fact that you can never blame the voters. But here's also the reality: whilst voters detest negative politics, uh, regressive analysis of election outcomes the world over also show that it it remains the most effective way ultimately to 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 um, uh, let's say get your message across to voters, and that is that if you can point if you can point out to the failures, the weaknesses, and the uh, let's say the, the deficiencies in the armor of your opponent. Um, so, in that sense, political parties also, unfortunately, it must be said, tap into human nature. Uh, but in the run up to election twenty twenty four, we 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 hope to put a, a more positive. Um, uh, let's say, outlook to at least the prospects of a post-election uh, pact that can maybe build an alternative government can, that can can improve things in South Africa. Thank you, Werner Hoorn. That was Werner Hoorn from the DA, De Hazes with the IEC, talking to us about the importance of a single vote. Thank you. Thank you.